What the heck is a pip? Hey Power Director Peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from Power Director University. For those of you who don't know, PIP or PIP stands for picture in picture and guess what? There's some picture in picture objects in Power Director that you can layer all over your videos and make them look extra snazzy and professional and I'm going to show you how to make that happen. So let's jump off into Power Director 14 Ultimate and make it happen. All right, Power Director peeps, here we are in Cyberlink Power Director 14 Ultimate, and I'm about to show you how to use the PIP objects room. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a clip and I'm going to drag it down to the timeline. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the PIP objects room. Now, once you go into this room, you have the content on the left, any custom uh, PIP objects that you created. Uh, any items that you downloaded, any 3D paint animations that you made, etc., etc. Um, these holiday packs, you have to uh, buy them or get them with your version of the software, whatever the, the case may be. I'm going to go to the general section. Now, under the general section, you've got some PIP objects for callouts. So I'm going to drag this dialogue. I'm going to left click on it and I'm going to drag it down into the timeline. You can grab it and drag it down to any timeline track number. So I'm going to drag it down to track number two. That's what I like to do. All right. I don't know what else to say, but anyway, let's keep it moving. All right. So now that I have it down here, you see that I get some options right above my, um, time in the timeline. First one is modify. So if I click on modify, you get some options that you're familiar with. It's the PIP designer. So you have options to change the position of the object. You can change the scale of the object. Uh, you can turn off aspect ratio and change them independently if you wish to do so. Uh, you can change the opacity and the rotation within the object settings. Then you have chroma key. So if you want to enable chroma key, let's say I didn't want this white. I wanted it see-through. I could click on my eyedropper and I can click on the color that I want to take out. And now it's kind of like a little word dialog bubble, but the white's not there. Uh, I can take on the take on or off the shadow that's on here. I can add a border. I can flip it if I want it on the other side. Move it over here if I want. Uh, add 3D settings if I need to, and fades. Then under the motion tab, same stuff that you'll see. You can add motion by selecting any one of these options on here, and then you can change those settings as you wish, as I showed you in my PIP designer and some of my other videos. And then you have mask. So if you want to add a mask, you can add a mask and change the properties of that mask as well. I'm going to click on save because I want to keep this little flip that I did because I want to show you something. Besides the fact that you can change the scale from the modify option that I showed you a second ago, you can also just left click and drag it and move it around. If you put your cursor over any of these nodes, you can change the size. And if you put your cursor around this circle that's around this plus sign, you get this little rotation symbol. So if you left click and hold it down, you can rotate it. And now I can point the little thing towards her face. And it looks like she's really saying that, right? Right. All right, so the next option we got down here is fix enhance. So if I click on fix enhance, so you're going to get the same options that you would see under most circumstances. You'll get your lighting adjustments. Um, you got your lens correction. Uh, of course, you can't use the red eye. You could apply and refocus if you want to. You got color adjustments on here, and you also got white balance. 
So those are all the regular options that you get on there. You also get the option to click on the keyframe button. If you click on this, then it gives you most of the same options that you get under modify as far as your uh, clip attributes, but then you also get your white balance and your color. And you can actually keyframe all of the adjustments to make them more precise and change them and move them along and um, just really give the clip or the object your own flair, right? Or your own sense of motion or color or whatever it is that you're adding to it. And then, of course, you got your duration button. You want to change the duration of the actual clip. You can do that here. Or you can trim it by just putting your mouth on the end and trimming it either way, right or left. So I'm going to close this out. And I want to show you one last option in the PIP object room. And this is the option to create your own PIP object from an image. So if I click on this, I can select an image from my computer. I can browse to whatever folder I want and select an image. So let's say I select this image. Uh, it could be a PNG. It can be a JPEG. Um, probably could be a GIF too. I'm not too sure. I haven't used them. But I'm going to use this JPEG here and I'm going to click on open. And so now I have the image on the screen and I can resize it to make it the size that I want. All of this checkerboard back here is going to be transparent. So that means that wherever I place this PIP object, whatever video track I have above it will be visible through this. So now that I have this, I can change the object settings, the position scale, all the things that I showed you originally. You can flip it, do all those things to it. I can add motion to it once again, move it across the screen. Uh, I can add a mask to it, or I can create a custom mask. So if I click on create mask, it brings up pictures again, and I can choose a picture. I'm going to choose this PNG image, and I'm going to click on open. And now it asks me if I want to use the alpha channel to create the mask, or if I want to use grayscale. Since it has an alpha, it's a PNG with transparency, I'm going to click OK. And then what it does is it creates a mask using the image as the part that you can see through and the alpha all around it. So now this PIP object is very customized based on the two pictures that I used. I can click on save, give it a name, and click on OK. And now it will be in the custom section with all of the other PNG objects that I created. So that's it, peeps. You know it, you love it. The PIP Object Room. Hey, Power Director peeps. Thanks for watching the entire video. I really appreciate you doing that for me. It really helps me out a lot. If you like the content in this video, hit the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. If you got questions, you need help, or you just got a tutorial request, leave me a comment below. And don't forget, smash the subscribe button if you want to get Power Director Love like this every other Saturday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.